I know, I know, I know. You don't have to tell me. I shouldn't be going to bars, picking fights with people. I know. But you should have saw the other guy. No, I did not get punched. This is poison ivy. I get it four times a year. I just had a dream last night. I was dreaming like, wow, I didn't get poison ivy this year. And then I wake up with this. It sucks because I have to do videos. And I do videos every day. And But I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do a video anyway. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what happened to me with uh, years of prednisone. And uh, also, we'll talk about cortisol as it relates to stress. And is it possible that you could end up with the side effects from prednisone by going through chronic stress? We're going to talk about that. This is hideous. Maybe I should talk to you like this. It's a little bit... No, that's not even... I, I can't even look at this. I'm just going to wear these. I don't even want, to, want you to look at it. It looks disgusting, but this looks better. So let's talk about prednisone and cortisol. But let me just tell you a quick story about what happened to me. In my 20s, I was gardening and somehow there was some poison ivy in there and I got exposed to it and I re reacted really bad. Go to the doctor, take the prednisone, it goes away. Next year, same thing happens. This went on for like probably 10 years in a row until the point where my poison ivy reactions on my skin didn't go away. So I couldn't use prednisone anymore. And I know from that prednisone, it created a lot of problems with my body, which I'm going to talk about. But it's pretty scary. If you have some type of severe inflammatory skin reaction or other reactions, and you need something to help and prednisone doesn't work, what do you do? But very unfortunately, it's I have not figured this poison ivy out. In fact, I don't even have to touch poison ivy. I could get close to it. I could get maybe a few feet away from it and all of a sudden I'll start getting reactions. So it must be in my nervous system because these similar patterns of poison ivy itching start to pop out in certain places, rarely on my face, but this time it was on my eye, which really sucks because now I have to wait for like two weeks before it goes away. So why do people take prednisone? Mainly for an anti-inflammatory or some type of immune suppressant effect. So they give it to people with autoimmune diseases, arthritis, injuries, and even uh, if you have an organ transplant, it's part of the immune suppressive effects because the immune system will start attacking the new organ that was put in you. Now, the problem with this prednisone, it comes with a package. It gives you side effects. If you take higher doses, I think like 80 milligrams, you can start getting a moon face. But I think a lot of people have a subclinical version of this, not even taking prednisone, just by high levels of cortisol, and they start developing somewhat of a round moon face. In fact, I had it when I was under a lot of carbs. There is a big association between a condition called Cushing syndrome, where you have this high level of cortisol, uh, and uh, also diabetes type 2, metabolic syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome, things like that. A lot of things that are unknown, but just realize that prednisone is a synthetic version of cortisol. And cortisol um, is a hormone in your adrenal glands that actually helps your immune system. It does a lot. It prepares the body for stress situations. So to better understand this, I'll show you in this medical book right here. Okay, right here. A condition called Cushing's syndrome, which the person has high levels of cortisol and the fat is redistributed to their face, their belly, and like on the top of their shoulders, like a hunchback, they get a fat pad there. And the body is literally taking protein from certain places and turning that into sugar and converting into fat from the thighs, the butt. So you lose your butt, you lose your legs, and it goes right to the belly. And there's a lot of problems because you get rosacea, spider veins, osteoporosis. You lose potassium, calcium, magnesium. You also deplete or block vitamin D's effect. So you don't get the vitamin D effect, which is interesting. Allergies, asthma, immune suppression. So you're more susceptible to viruses. Heartburn, as well as diabetes, because the body's turning its own self protein into sugar at a massive level. So you can end up with diabetes. So that was Cushing syndrome, but I think there is a subclinical situation going around with people because you don't just end up with that overnight. It's kind of a gradual, slow process with this high level of cortisol over a period of time. 
So you might have some of those symptoms because of stress. Now, if you look at the cause of Cushing syndrome, um, you know, they talk about genetics, they talk about a tumor on the adrenal gland, or maybe a tumor on your pituitary gland, which by the way, if you have a tumor on the pituitary gland, um, you'll have also like a hyperpigmentation. Your skin will be darker, but also Cushing syndrome can occur with animals. You know, they can have tumors and they can create these problems. But here's the thing, prednisone can also create Cushing syndrome and all of those effects. So prednisone comes with a package. You're 10 times more likely to get high blood glucose, diabetes. You get heart problems, arrhythmia problems, palpitation, even strokes. Psychosis, you can have all sorts of mental side effects. You become highly irritable, usually with the lower doses. But then when you get higher doses, you can get depression. You crave sugar and salt and you retain fluid, which makes sense from several things. But um, you know, you have to realize if you're getting this adrenal stimulation, it's not just cortisol that's being affected. You have other hormones in the adrenals that control your fluid balance as well. But realize that cortisol itself is a glucocorticoid. So basically, cortisol can affect glucose in a big way. It gets your body to run on glucose. It messes up glucose metabolism. So you can't deal with glucose or sugar very well anymore. This is why stress is one of the big causes of insulin resistance. And so does prednisone cause the side effect of insulin resistance and diabetes. So it's interesting because a lot of the effects of sugar are similar to the effects of stress. This is why you can get off sugar, but go through stress and your body will start to uh, act like you're eating sugar. A couple of things you need to know about prednisone is that once you start taking it, you don't want to come off of it too fast. Get with your doctor to make sure you do it gradually because you can have more side effects. Because when you take uh, prednisone, uh, the body now depends on that and it stops producing its own cortisol. And so if you come off of it too quickly and the adrenals can't produce that, I mean, you can imagine the side effects, um, because it just doesn't bounce back right away for everyone. And then sometimes people come off of it and now they get those symptoms that come right back. So that's really the catch-22 with this prednisone is that, okay, it gets rid of your inflammatory conditions and your symptoms, but then you're going to come off. What's going to keep them gone? you really can't be on this prednisone forever. And the more you take it, the more it weakens the system. But if you don't take it, you have the symptoms come back. So it's really a situation. Also, if you're on a prednisone, realize that uh, it depletes a lot of nutrients, calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, B vitamins, vitamin C, chromium. Um, there's a really great pharmacist who uh, basically has a whole channel about prednisone. I'm gonna put that link down below. She has some great information. But the point is that prednisone and cortisol deplete you of nutrients. So if someone is on prednisone, they should also be taking these nutrients. And also, especially as they come off prednisone. And that way, they'll have less complications, hopefully. So whether you're on prednisone or whether you're going through chronic stress, let's talk about how to reduce cortisol. The number one thing is to do whatever you can to lower your stress, wherever that's coming from. Is it coming from people? Is it coming from videos that you're watching that give you bad news? Like Anything that's causing the stress, you just have to deal with that. The other thing that you can do, and I released a couple of videos on this topic, um, a lot of times when you have this sustained chronic uh, mental stress, the body doesn't know the difference between the physical stress and mental stress. So being chased by a tiger could be equivalent to going through this chronic stress to some level. So I think uh, a good way to counter that is to do uh, physical work, exercise, of course, long walks, especially in nature would be good. Uh, also, there's some great data on um, certain hobbies like in the arts or even music, huge benefit to lower cortisol and stress because it shifts your attention off the worry. And worrying is the worst form of stress because you're, you're not solving any problems. You're just thinking about them and you're stirring up the problems. So the more that you can get your mind off of it and uh, focus on something else, the better. From a nutrition angle, magnesium, potassium, and B1, and uh, vitamin D. Almost forgot about vitamin D. And uh, I should mention this too. I forgot one of the side effects of prednisone is, 
a loss of cognitive function, memory, focus, brain fog. Another thing that is really good for uh, lowering cortisol is ashwagandha. There's other adaptogens, but ashwagandha is really good. And then the next thing you could do is just focus on your breathing. Your breathing can put you in a state of relaxation, calmness. It can help lower cortisol by slowing the breath down. Uh, I have videos on this, but if you could slow your breath down to six breaths per minute, that's like five seconds in, five seconds out, um, and you control it. It can help pull you out of a panic attack. It can help you sleep. It can help reduce cortisol. And there's a really cool thing we're going to be coming out with, and uh, we might have that out already. So check in the description, but it's a device Okay, that we're not really looking at the oxygen, we're looking at your pulse rate. There's data that we can extract off the pulse rate, and there's a technology called heart rate variability that measures this uh, stress and recovery cycle because that way you can kind of see where you're at. You can't really improve something if you can't measure it. So, this is a very good objective and visual way of looking inside your body and seeing where you're really at with your stress and recovery, your ability to adapt to stress. And uh, it's a really cool technology. So I will um, put that link down below when I'm ready to release that. But if you want the complete list of all 25 ways to lower cortisol, I have a link for that. Press the link down below. You can go to my website, download it for free, and start applying this information for your own stress.